Hey y'all, my name's Ned. This little guy is my dog, Jai. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to build a simple piano in Microsoft Power BI. Now this video is part of my video series where I'm building a financial forecasting process for a small construction company. Now in earlier videos in this series, we actually designed a Microsoft Fabric database to store our financial forecasts. We designed, we wrote Python code to read and write from Microsoft Power BI into that database. And then now finally we're in the Power BI design part. In the previous video, I designed the input form that would allow a construction manager to input in a forecast. And finally, that brings us to today where we're actually building the front end PNL that will display all of the forecasts that our hypothetical construction managers have entered into Microsoft Power BI. Now, if you're interested in any of those other videos in this series, I'll have them all linked in order down in the video description. But that doesn't mean that you need to watch the previous videos in this video series in order to get value from this video. The approach that I'll be using to build out this profit and loss statement is one that will work no matter your data set or your data setup. It's the layout and the way that we're handling the accounts. Okay, you ready? Well, let's jump in and let's start building. Okay, so here we are. This is exactly where we left off with this project yesterday. And this is the screen that allows us to select a department, select an account type of either income or expense, and then a account, a fiscal period, and then enter a value. As you can see, we've only ever entered in one value into this report. So today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be building out the layout that will allow us to see all of these accounts in aggregate. So I'm gonna click uh, this little plus button right here to create a new page. And then, uh, well, actually I'm not gonna click the plus button because then it doesn't have any of my formatting. I'm gonna right click here and then click duplicate. And then I'm gonna go over here. And just like that, I have a new page that looks great. And I'm going to rename this subtitle from financial forecast to uh, p &L summary. And then just to stay consistent with our formatting, I'm going to go right here and I'm going to remove the bold. Now, before we start building our actual PL, we need to understand the order of operations that exists within a PL. Typically, you start with your revenue, then you have your expenses, and then you end with your profit or loss. We're going to do that exact same order of operations in Microsoft Power BI with three different tables. So jumping back then into Microsoft Power BI, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be adding in three matrices. One matrix for revenue. I'm just saying matrices, but matrices. One for expenses, and then one final one for profit and loss. Now, some people will try to do this all in a single table with ordering. It's just easier just to have three separate ones in my opinion. The next thing that we'll wanna do is we will want to bring over our account description into the rows here, right? And here you can see it flowing in. Then we will want to do the same for here. And then right over here, we're gonna actually make this just be a uh, grouping of measures or like a single measure called profit. So we don't have that right now. Then the next thing we have to do is we have to add our fiscal periods along the top. Now, the way that I'm doing this does introduce one small flaw. That I'll show you in just a second. However, right now we need to jump back into our direct query data model that's behind this front end of the Power BI report and we need to create a few measures. We need to create a value measure and we're gonna use a coalesce here and then we'll go sum and we'll go value. Then we need to create a expenses measure. Oh, and oops, forgot my zero there. So we'll click that. So then we'll need to create an expenses measure by clicking this new measure button right here, changing this to expenses. And then right here on this sum, we will put this in a calculate right here. And then we will we'll apply a column level filter and always do a column level filter when using a calculate where we'll go account type equals, and I believe it's expense right here. And we'll close that. And then, and oops, I forgot a comma, so I'll fix that. There we 
go. This should be good. And then we'll create a new measure right here where if we go back, called income, right here, and we'll do the same, except we'll change this to income. Then finally, we will create a profit measure, which will be our income minus our expenses. And we'll go ahead and save that. One other thing that I just is good for us to do is for us to go through here and change the format to currency on all these, just so it gets formatted nicely. So I'm going through and I'm changing this all to currency. Now, one of the things that we will see when we do this is that it'll typically, I believe, give two decimal places. So, and that's, you know, if your business is producing in the millions, that's probably not something you want to see. But, you know, we, we've created our measures so far. So then jumping back into Power BI, and again, this Power BI desktop file is connected to that direct query data model, hitting the refresh, what you'll now see is that I now have all of these measures. So I can drag my expenses into my values here. And as you can see, I have $0 coming in. But now this is where we hit the air that I'm about to be talking about, which is when I now bring over my fiscal year and period, right? What it's going to happen because I used a coalesce is it's going to populate all the way over. Now, I wanted to use the coalesce in this section because, uh, you know, it's possible that someone might not, you know, in this hypothetical construction company, someone might not have entered in a value for all these accounts. So a coalesce is important, but it, it creates some kind of interesting dynamics. So like, for example, take a look what happens if I drag over my fiscal period. Right now, I have a filter on this visual just for this fiscal year. But if I bring this all the way over, you can see I have to scroll. Now, because I'm using two separate matrices, one for my income accounts and then one for my expense accounts, when I do the same over here, so I bring over my expense, right, and then bring over my fiscal period again, what you'll see, and did I bring, bring over expenses into both these? I think I might have. Yes, I did the whoopsie. This one should have been income right here. What you'll see is that these two, right, are not exactly in sync. So there, there's a couple ways you can do this. The easiest way is to probably just get it to always show the current fiscal period by applying this fiscal slicer, right? So right here, I have it set to the same. If I go back over, I'll do over go over here and I'll set this equal to fiscal year. Now this will require some updating, right? The other way you could do this without updating is you could introduce a fiscal year age column where the current fiscal year, for example, is a one or a zero, right? And then the next fiscal year is going to be like, uh, so if the current fiscal year is one, the next fiscal year would be two, and then the prior fiscal year would be zero. And that would solve this because then you could have a filter on one and you wouldn't need to always go back and update this. But that's not what I'm gonna be doing for this project. And as you can see, here we are. We're starting to have these tables work out. Now, one thing I am gonna also do is I'm gonna go into my total row and I'm gonna turn off my column subtotals here and I'm gonna turn off my column subtotals here, and then I'm gonna turn off my row, and I'm gonna turn off my row. Actually, do you know I'll leave the column subtotals on because I think that's important for us to see. But here we are, right? So we have our expenses right here, or our revenue right here, and then our expenses over here. One of the things I am going to do is I'm going to rename this account description here to uh, income, right? And then I'm going to rename this right here to expenses. Now, this is all looking pretty good in my opinion, but as you can see, it's now time for us to add one more view. And what that view is going to be is our profit view. So if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. 
I do just want to take this quick opportunity to ask you to subscribe right before we add in that gross profit. It means a lot. It helps the channel grow. And, you know, I'm currently working my way up to 5,000 subs. We're almost actually at three, which is pretty good because we're still under a year of this channel. But again, before we build out our profit, I just wanted to ask you to please subscribe. Okay, but with that interlude out of the way, let's jump back into Power BI where it's now time for us to build out our profit table. Now, you might have noticed while I was off screen, I actually deleted a table. And that's because in order to get our profit working well, we're gonna probably struggle a little bit. And let, let me show you why. So if I remove our account description, because we don't have an account called gross profit, and I remove our expenses, we'll be left with this. Now, if I bring profit over, it will actually calculate profit correctly, right? So in period three, we had $1,000. It's minusing the $0 of expenses. And it's saying, hey, our profit's $1,000 but we now don't have a value over here. So the way that we're gonna solve that is we're gonna create a calculated table with just a single row that where the value it returns is gross profit. So moving back then into our computer over here, what we can do is we can kind of take our calculated table right here, right? And we can go right here and we can go new table and we can paste this and we'll title this gross profit and there'll be a data table and we'll change the data type right here to string and the value will be gross profit and we'll title this column right here accounts now if we click the little check mark i think this should be good to go right so here it is gross profit and then when we move back into Microsoft Power BI, we hit this old little refresh and we now have accounts. So we can now bring our rows over here. So there we have it, right? Gross profit is now appearing. And then we can bring our profit over here into values, right? And so here we have values coming over. And then we can bring our fiscal period right back over here into columns and look, Look at how that is tying, it is looking good. Now, one of the things you do have to do over here is you have to adjust all these columns so that way they're the same. But if we are starting to look right here is our PNL looking nice and slick. Now there's obviously some UI visualization stuff that we need to improve on, but I'm actually feeling pretty good. So if we edit this and we title this to PNL summary, what you can now see is here we have our PNL summary, and then here we have where someone can enter in a new forecast. And I actually might change this to forecast PNL summary, right? Because I think that's really what this is, is we're building out a Power BI forecasting model. But here we are. So now all we have left to do is we need to add a slicer based on our project manager function because in this, right, they're going to be selecting a department. So they're either going to be selecting commercial, electrical, plumbing, or residential, entering in a forecast, and then that forecast is going to appear over here on the summary screen, which is great. And we've got to shrink this table down right here, and then we'll grab all this. And we'll bring this down over here. And then we will go back over to here. We'll grab this department slicer right here. And we'll say don't sync because we don't want to change our inputs. Right. And we'll put this over here. So when we're now looking, right, someone can now select a department. And that department could be commercial, it could be electrical, right? Plumbing or residential. And let's go ahead and let's put, I'm actually gonna, well, sorry. I'm starting to play with the UI a little bit, but which matters, but doesn't matter that much. I think you guys get the gist of where this is going and how I would build out my profit and loss statement here in Microsoft Power BI. If this was 
a real company that we are working for. And it's all about spacing and getting the spacing right. So here's our select department. And then what we'll have over here is we'll have a button that will bring them over to here so they can save or edit in a new financial forecast. And then we'll also have a button so they can delete out a forecast. Now this is at single select. So let me also go and fix that. So go slicer settings, selection, single select all. And then we need to add a all button. Show will show us select all. And then our department right here, we will switch this over. We'll go advanced filtering and we'll go is not blank. So here's our department, right? So someone, oh, that did not work. Department, do, 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 is not blank, apply filter. So right here now, they can either select all to view the forecast of the entire company, or they can unselect this and select electrical, plumbing, or residential. So here is our PL, and I honestly think it's looking pretty good. And let me collapse this so that way you guys can get a better view. So we have our PL, and then we have where a user will enter in their forecast. So thank you for watching. If you want to see me continue to develop this financial modeling dashboard, uh, subscribe. And if you made it this far, give the video a like, leave a comment about what you enjoyed. I'm trying a new editing tool. So if you notice the video is smoother than normal, also let me know. I'd appreciate that. Video editing is not my strong suit and probably neither is narration. I like, I like data, but <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you have a good rest of your day.